So today on Project Shop, we're over here at like 4.30 in the morning on a Monday. Uh, I couldn't sleep, so I figured I'd start the week off by coming in here and doing a massive cleanup of the shop. Now last week when we were building the Stater Wrecker, I was looking for stuff um, to, to do what I needed to do. Uh, I couldn't find some things. I didn't know if I had some things, because if you know, I've mentioned in the past, I had tons of steel uh, for this project and other projects that pretty much uh, came up missing from a place that I was told was secure. Um, and uh, anyway, we're moving on from that. But what I'm gonna do today is uh, clean up this absolute tornado of a mess that is supposedly my tool and hardware room. Uh, all, so a lot of this stuff here was actually stored on a shelf on the other side. And uh, when the guy moved out, I moved it in here to go through it and it kind of just stayed here and then stuff got added to it. And now we have this mess where I can't even really get in here. So what we're gonna do today is move all this stuff on the floor out. I have six more of these shelves, okay? And we're gonna kind of revamp these shelves, fix the one that I bent. My, uh, my fat ass got up on here and uh, I was standing up there and bent it. So we're gonna fix that, kind of reorganize this stuff. I'm gonna add some shelves. I'm gonna, these homemade shelves I made here, I'm gonna come off over here and go down here and if i have enough i'm going to try to go down this way because this is all unused space i mean the only thing going on here is uh i got some spiders hanging out that aren't really paying me rent so we're going to kind of evict them and um actually utilize this and clean up the shop out here because it is an absolute mess now I need uh, the milling machine and lathe to build some parts for this thing here. I got some serious stuff I want to do with this. And uh, the proper way to do it is to be able to machine the parts. So all of this stuff that I have over here needs to find a home. And its home is not on the floor. I have tools up there, tools on the floor, tools up there I need to go through. Parts and stuff up here. I have truck parts. I have... Uh, fenders for my dually I need to get on uh, repairing that these lights I'm gonna have to make a decision of if I'm gonna do something with them or scrap them they're brass they were actually from the breakers I think and they were replaced with lights that look just like it but LED and like two thousand dollars a piece they're like hand-built brass lights so I'd really like to do something with them I don't know I have enough to make like I think four or six of them there's a couple that got broken glass but we can make a couple nice ones clean them up or we're just going to scrap them I, I don't know um depending on how i feel but today's goal is to at least get the tool room sorted new shelves clean all this crap off the floor because it's like i got a pile of tools and whatnot over here and it just kind of goes around the room and uh it's just a nightmare in here so uh, before I can do any more projects, I need to know what I have, what tools I have to work with, what material I have to work with, what hardware I have. And, um, you know, I have all the stuff to finish putting a uh, pegboard up here. And then I'm going to decide what I'm going to do with this, if I'm going to use it or scrap it. I really like this. I actually started YouTube on this thing. This here, I put this up here. To hold my iPhone shooting straight down and I made my first couple YouTube videos right here uh, so I kind of don't want to get rid of this thing I think what I'm gonna do is clean it up uh, put all my tools on it try it out for a little bit see if I like it get it out of this corner you know once I get the shop cleaned up I'll have a little more space and uh, we'll use it for a little bit and if I decide I want to keep it if not it's uh, stainless steel it was it started its life out as a uh, refrigerator and stainless top from Arby's one of the guys working for me pushed it over they were throwing it out and we gave it a kind of a new life as like a little uh, a workbench but um, I don't know if I want it that thing there uh, I like this thing I was gonna make this into a small welding table I had this steel plate I was gonna put on it but I do have some big old two inch thick discs maybe i'll put that on it instead um i don't know we'll, we'll figure something out with it but i do like the fact of having a little mobile 
uh, welding table, a heavy steel, you know what I'm saying? Something I could just put a clamp on, put a vise on it. Maybe we'll, I got a couple of vices around here we'll mount to it and, uh, you know, do something cool with it. So uh, I also have a bunch of LEDs I want to put underneath here. For those of you who have seen the video where I built these shelves, um, I have a bunch of under lights that I had put on here before. It just wasn't bright enough for what I wanted. I have some new ones. And if you've seen in that last video, I have some 4x12 sheets of aluminum. Uh, and I have some 4x10 sheets over there that I can continue this shelf with all the way down there and to there. I don't want to really interfere with the mill. Um, but I do want to continue this shelf all the way down so I can put all my drill stuff up off the floor. That'll be in another video. Today we're going to focus on the tool room because it is an absolute mess in here. Um, you know, I can't even get to my nut and bolt bin or my over here where I have a bunch of hydraulic fittings and whatnot. And I, I think pulling out uh, more shelving is just going to kind of dial everything in and, and make things a little more streamlined. I have a bunch of this stuff um, that we're going to utilize that I basically got for free. And that shit ain't cheap. So I think I got enough of it. I can run. I can just wrap the wall here. And uh, I have enough material, plywood, uh, back in here that I can use. And, um, yeah, I see I, right now I can't even get back here to the, uh, uh, the, the tool bin I made. There's just a bunch of crap in the way. I got steel plates. Um, but I have a bunch of this stuff here big sections of it so we're going to utilize that since we didn't pay nothing for it really other than a few cents a pound i got a bunch of plywood here already cut for shelving that i had in my last shop you know i got some nice diamond plate this stuff is thick right here we don't want to cut this up for shelving i have some other stuff we'll use for that um but yeah so what i'm going to do and oh look at all this stuff this is just a mess that uh, I need to go through, scrap it out, and uh, decide what I'm gonna do. I need to get this stuff up and running. It's way overdue. And, um, you know, it's gonna help me basically for all the projects because I need the milling machine and the lathe to repair the, uh, the shaft on the granulator. That's one reason why I haven't put that back together is because the shaft got damaged because of, uh, the idiot that I got it from did something stupid that I told him not to do when I before I even bought it and um, pretty much ruined it so we have to repair all that crap and uh, this is what we need plus we'll be pretty much have a machine shop you know we can prototype stuff I got a guy the guy I got these machines from says he's got work for him so to bring in some extra revenue in the shop you know, rather than have them just sit here, we're gonna start working them. Okay, we made some good progress so far. We got uh, the floor cleaned. I haven't seen this floor in months. At least we can get to our tool bin or our nut and bolt bin. And uh, these nut and bolt bins over here, they need to, I, I think I'm gonna set this one up here for stainless because what's in here now is uh, a bunch of fine thread stuff that I never use. So we're gonna get all that out of there. I'll dedicate this to stainless steel. We'll put that stuff down here in this blue bin that, um, I don't remember where I got that. Someone gave that to me. Matter of fact, my old boss, when I worked at Concrete Cutting, gave this to me, that to me, and this. And, uh, that's a shelf out of, like, a van from one of my customers. So, yeah, we found some pretty good stuff. Check this out, man. Found a whole 
five gallon bucket of uh, I think these are four and a half inch three quarter stainless bolts um, I think I priced these at Home Depot and they were literally over four like four dollars and fifty cents a piece and uh, that was a while ago so yeah we have that whole bucket of them and I'm pretty sure I have a whole nother bucket of them funny thing is these came from the job where I broke my jaw cutting up these big extruded candy cane looking arms um, so at least I, I recovered a couple hundred dollars worth of bolts out of it and we have my giant 220 reels my single uh, 110 reels we're gonna uh, put them out in the shop and then these are all the power transfers I have this one here this big monstrosity of a thing um, I'm wondering if that one thing I can have that I have will that motor that I just got will bolt up to this um, this is um, 1,000 or 11,000 239 inch pounds of torque I don't know what that equates to but it's a 189.09 to 1 ratio what I want to do with this is make a shredder I have a bunch of these things uh, back in here I pulled them all out of a dumpster they were brand new and I'm pretty sure like uh, some of these ones like this I have some stainless ones I want to use for a chain conveyor but like some of these ones back here like that one right there you probably can't see it it's dark some of those were like nine hundred dollars a piece and i got piles of them uh another thing i saw this is quite interesting this crazy contraption right here this has two hot water heating elements in either end and these, this is the the things that control them this was from my first waste oil processor I had a two-story 500 gallon um, waste oil filter processor set up where I would um, blend waste oil like waste motor oil and waste tranny fluid with gasoline and I had this crazy two-story contraption that would pump it up through a bunch of filters and let it gravity feed down into a tank through some water separators and then through a bank of like 12 filters <laughs> funny thing is all my neighbors thought i was gonna level the fucking block man <laughs> anyway i would run the oil through this it would go down in there hit that first heating element come across this one and then it would come out of there steaming and i would pump it up into a 55 gallon drum that literally had a pair of jeans with the legs tied off and the top scrunched down like clamped down on, on a on a pipe and I would pump it through the jeans and that was my first filter and believe it or not the jeans actually would clean out so much sludge like when I would first start running it, the jeans would kind of it would run through them pretty quick but after about a few hundred gallons going through it the jeans would swell up <laughs> like like some fat guy's legs or something um because it was you know clogging up basically and i'd have to take them out and and um basically i would i think i would just throw them out and put a new pair in there um but they would i would clean them a couple times before i did that worked great um i literally ran my truck that's out back I bought that truck with 220,000 miles. It's got almost, it's like 495,000 miles. I literally burned like 250,000 miles worth of black diesel uh, with that, with that set up. Um, and unfortunately, when uh, that fucking scandemic came, I wind up working from the house for a while and I, I got rid of all my tanks. At the end, um, I literally had a 400 gallon tank a 500 gallon tank a 300 gallon tank and another 450 gallon tank i had a whole process where i literally could have about 2,000 gallons of waste oil on hand 
um, and the last 450 gallon tank was all the blended ready to rock and roll stuff that I would back my truck in the shop and fill up my 100 gallon fuel cells um, yeah they were good times but anyway uh, we got this cleaned out and uh, I'm gonna go get the um, the uprights that I want to use for this and kind of just get me a ballpark now this is I got no schematic I got no plan I just kind of have an idea and a pile of metal um, and we're gonna see how far we can get so I'm gonna go round up some stuff and uh, I'm kind of getting hungry so I'm probably gonna eat something in, in that time frame but uh, we'll get back at it here in a minute and I'll show you what I got to try to uh, build this stuff up okay this is what we got going on here we got some real redneck engineering uh, originally I wanted to run these two posts or these two shelving units one here one over here at the end of the uh, toolbox here but the problem is I would have to cut that short to get it under the wall and then I couldn't run the shelves up really high because I would have to offset this safety deposit box and then it would interfere with my door so what I'm gonna do is basically this right here I'm gonna bolt these really long uprights to this which is gonna reinforce this and give it some rigidity and give me the ability to go all the way up you know as high as I want to go basically and uh, then what I'm gonna do is uh, take some of these I got some short cut pieces and I will bolt them to this like that and the reason I want to use these ones is because um, you know they're, they are like I have a whole bunch of them that are just like this size here but this is like doubled so the strength is going to be doubled you know we're looking for structural here and then what i'm going to do is um i found this oddball piece i'm just piecing this together uh from what i got this is an oddball okay and i'm going to use it like this okay for the main well not the main but it's going to go on the front side here across the front at the lowest shelf level and then off of that one I'm gonna tap in to bring it this way and then back over there and what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna take some of this I have some really long pieces in the back I'm gonna take some of this and to make it super strong well not super strong but way stronger uh, and to get the height that I want because I want that to be the height of the highest shelf all the way around I'm gonna wrap this around the pipe and then that's gonna give me my notches to where I can just drill into that and have even um, things all the way around as long as I have them cut the same at the bottom um, or I or I can just use the pipe as it is um, and I got I got this pipe I basically uh got paid steel scrap steel price for it like five cents a pound all of this stuff i paid like five cents a pound for literally i think i might have twenty dollars in all of this stuff and the and this pipe so this pipe i'm gonna put here one here close to the wall and then one out here and then hook to the shelves and bring them shelves out past almost like a cantilever kind of like this okay and then I'm going to tie in the rest of it. And I might just run that straight across. Um, I don't know. If it's high enough for me to get under here, I really don't need all this open space. I can uh, I could just run that straight across to the shelf over here. I'm still up in the air about that. That's something I can come back and do uh, afterwards. But um, I figured rather than just running some of this stuff, which probably would be okay um this is pretty stout stuff um the the pipe here is a little thicker and uh it's not going to bend and wobble and and um you know i don't know it's i'm still up in the air about that but i'm thinking about just doing something like this okay that way this can be right here behind here wherever that shelf's going to come out otherwise i would have to put it out here which i really don't want to do uh, I'd rather have it behind the toolbox 
and uh, keep keep this area as clear as possible you know because if I'm moving a cart in here I, I ultimately what I'd really like to do is push my welders in here uh, keep them out of the way out of there um, and then what I want to do is because I have so much of this stuff this wall here I would like to put some of this on this wall uh, basically just come attach it up here almost basically putting legs on this right and then put a bunch of cross little cross members here that i can hook the pegboard stuff goes right into this you know the hooks for the pegboard they'll lock right into this so i can have a wall right there where i can put hang whatever all kinds of stuff um you know just to kind of utilize the space and uh know what i have and keep things kind of out and uh i think what i'm going to do is the same thing right here this whole face I might just screw some of that stuff to and then I could put all kinds of stuff on here and um, you know let's uh, make it nice and I have a bunch of LEDs that uh, I can put up under here to light it up because we're going to get shadows once I start putting more shelves up so what I'm going to do now is for sure I'm going to be using these couple pieces I'm going to take them out in the shop and paint them get them get them painted so they can dry in the next hour while i kind of uh gather all the pieces and figure out what exactly i'm going to do um i have i mean i can make some serious shelving here because this is the last load of stuff i picked up i've just been kind of peeling through this that's where i got these pipes i got some bigger pipe here matter of fact i might use this big pipe here for the uh the train or the uh the stator record but i have literally stacks of this stuff and this stuff is not cheap all different lengths stacks of it there stacks of it over there that's stainless that ain't cheap either you know so we're going to utilize as much of that stuff and then back here from the first time that i picked up some of that stuff i have quiet it down in here a little bit i have really tall pieces i think these are like 10 footers i got stacks of them okay and this stuff ain't cheap and I, I got stacks back here look at this these are like five footers there's just stacks and stacks of this stuff oh man good thing i came back here i just seen this here i got another couple pieces of this I can use this stuff here for something those things will actually lock into this that's probably like a six footer so I'm gonna get some pieces out here and uh, start painting them and then uh, kind of gather up everything I'm gonna use and then uh, we're gonna build some shelves Okay, I got most of that stuff painted. Uh, now I just used some cheap, uh, I think these were like a couple dollar cans. I had a whole pile of these from uh, Home Depot. And uh, we just painted them fat, flat black. I'm gonna let these dry for a little bit. Uh, I didn't paint everything because I'm not sure exactly how things are gonna go, but I got enough painted to where I could start. And then once I kind of get an idea, I can uh, come out here and paint the rest of it. Even though I was wearing a mask, man, I started getting lightheaded painting all that stuff. Uh, although the, the fans did a good job of pulling that shit right out of the building. But we're going to uh, take a little break here. And then uh, I'm going to think about how I want all this to go up. 
Okay, this is where we're at. I got everything, well, not everything, but everything uh, that I have so far painted. And I got them bolted together. Now, I found these kits. I had like four bags of these nuts and bolts. And uh, I believe these were from my winch on my crane. I have warranties on them, so every like year I would change them out just to kind of refresh them. And uh, they give you all the relays and wires and the hardware kits and i would just literally swap out the winch and have all this extra stuff so i got those bolted in i got that bolted in um now because of this plug here that i use all the time i'm gonna move this over to this line and just leave a gap back here it's really not going to affect anything back here because either way um I would have to pull this out that distance and because I want to keep this flush so that I have it's not interfering with the door so I'd have to pull that out anyway um, so it doesn't matter where I put that and it's gonna give me room to get behind uh, you know put bolts in behind uh, this stainless thing here uh, will actually probably fit right here as a shelf uh, because I'm not gonna have any extra of this stuff anymore kind of like i did over here i used all that stuff over here and realistically if i needed more of that stuff up in here i could just take this stuff down and put plywood up there but hey we're just using what we got here so i have all this wood that i actually had from my last shop um, i don't want to cut it i'm just going to try to use as much of it as i can the way it is now since these beams are super long anyway and, and come out to here somewhere um, I'm gonna actually just set them on top of this so this piece is gonna be three inches higher than this thing it's gonna be up here and I'm just gonna let it ride all the way out however far this comes so it'll be like this far and uh, it's basically just gonna kind of cantilever over out here but it'll be like up here somewhere plenty of room for me to walk underneath um, if it's interferes i don't think it's going to interfere with anything but i could always just whack it off if i wanted to or if i like it i could just use some of this um i don't even know what you call this stuff unistrut or um whatever this stuff is called i have tons of it i could actually close that gap and level this shelf to that or do whatever man just make it go over to the end it doesn't matter but i'm going to start there and what I did is I cut some pieces. Uh, this is 12 and 3 quarters. So I cut some 12 and 3 quarter of that angle stuff. I'm just going to call it unistrut. And um, I'm going to put it right on the ends of this. So either end will have that. It'll give me the width. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this right here. I'm going to put one at the top. One at the bottom. But it, the, these pipes are going to sit on the outside right here. One's going to be in here. One's going to be right here. And it'll have the unistrut on the bottom there. I can actually uh, send a tap gun into the concrete. So it's not going to go anywhere. And uh, we're actually going to start with that. And then once I get that shelf up, I can kind of... Um, everything will go off of that. Because the next shelf is going to go that way. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to literally set it on top of this shelf. And wherever it winds up down there, that's where it is. And then we'll, we'll go across um, over there. So I'm going to go probably take these out where I have more room. And um, I'm probably just going to use some self-tappers to uh, secure the, that stuff to these and that. And make, you know, make little rectangles or boxes or whatever you want and uh this thing should start going up pretty easy okay i'm back at it i uh i built these two things okay i, I put some self tappers in the top and bottom of that and then i built this i put four cross members and then i went and ate lunch we're back at it now what i'm gonna do is uh slip that up in here and uh measure out how far that is and then we're just gonna kind of pull it out and uh square it with that probably uh somehow secure it to there with some self tappers and then um i have these two bolts 
we're going to drill a hole right through here and secure that with some bolts and then once that's up and we have it decked we can start running our piece uh this way or at least get an idea of uh where we're going to be uh i need to figure out how i'm going to square this because this has to be off the wall for that outlet and uh i'm not sure which which way I'm going to do this or how I'm going to attach it. Man, it sounds like it's raining. Oh, yeah. It's pouring. That feels nice. Nice cool breeze coming through now. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and get this up. Get it decked. And uh, then we can move on to figuring out how we're going to bridge this gap over here. And what we're going to do to secure this next piece. Okay, there you have it. Uh, so I wound up just putting three self-tappers in there uh, rather than one big bolt. Pretty much it's the same thing. And uh, and it's gonna give it a little rigidity. Um, that's actually pretty stout. So it's screwed into down there, screwed in there. That's kind of just free floating, but that's kind of hidden back there to where it ain't going nowhere. I'm not even going to worry about anchoring that to the floor. Okay, we got some shelvage going on. Now I didn't deck this top part yet. I got one more piece of wood um, and I'm gonna have to rip down the whole side. It's too wide, I think, I don't know. I think I need 13 inches and that's a little bit big. It is a little darker in here now, but that was uh, expected. Uh, and it's actually going to get a little darker when I deck that piece up there. I'm going to go ahead and rip that other piece down real quick. Uh, after I stop, take a break and get something to drink. And uh, hopefully, we put a level on this. Should be pretty darn level. I don't know about this one. That one is uh, close enough for uh, what we're doing. Yeah, it might have just got uh, pushed up with that thing. I had to put a bracket on there. I got it dialed into there. Uh, now this stuff here, I'm really not gonna be putting a lot of weight on, uh, especially because this one here is taking the support of this one. So we gotta be careful of what we put on here but this is pretty strong i don't know let's give it the uh let's see we're either going to bend it 
or it's gonna hold my fat ass up. Okay, 260 pounds. Uh, so I give it the redneck stamp of approval. Now, once I deck that, I'm probably gonna just deck that and uh, take a break and then uh, work on the shelving because I don't have enough plywood to run all the way around or do I? I don't know. I gotta check. I know I have a couple sheets up there I think I have two, three, almost four full sheets, but I want to use them to deck this span right here. There's absolutely, there's literally like no wood there, except for one little piece of particle board. And I'm not fond of particle board. I do have this piece I can utilize. And I do have this. And uh, this piece here, which I can use, but I think that's it for the big pieces of plywood. Um, I mean, we can piece it together with this stuff here. It would be nice to have a long piece, but you know, I don't want to spend any money on it. So far, I've just got my time into it. And uh, I think it came out really nice. Definitely gonna help me with uh, keeping, keeping the shop clean. Now, I would like to try and get this stainless piece. Let's see. Let's see if I can put you back here. If you're gonna see all this, but this would make a nice little. Oh, that's gonna be perfect. Prop it up with this for now, or let it sit. Wow, I wonder how level that is. I could almost pry these out. <laughs> It lines right up with it. I might just pry them out a little bit. Let's put the level on it. And uh, so it's a little high on that side if I pry them out. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do that right now. You got a screwdriver here? All right, hold on. Let's do some live action. tested and that's level enough for me so ha, that's pretty cool what I'm gonna do is get a piece of this and uh, I will bolt that right there like so and I'm gonna call that good to go I'll probably uh, secure it over there somehow but hey, now we just went all the way. We literally went from here all the way around to here. Now this does look kind of ghetto, but I could care less. 
it's a shelf it's going to do what it needs to do and uh we do have room for a whole nother level if needed i don't know if i need to go that far we just gained a ton of space i'm loving this open area now i've already decided since i have so much of this stuff i'm going to bolt some pieces here like this and i'm gonna make a little mini i'm gonna bolt another piece there and i'm gonna make a little mini shelf maybe two now maybe just one for all of my boxes of like seals and all this stuff and whatnot and whatever i got there so we're going to utilize all of this space here i'm going to put two pieces down to the floor right here okay and then you know square it off or uh put a piece across the bottom maybe even tap con this one and then i'm going to put a bunch of rows like this so i can put a whole bunch of stuff with the pegboard stuff right here so that's not going to be just an empty wall it'll actually be utilized we already started putting some stuff up on them little screws that were already on that wood and uh yeah we got a lot of stuff up here man so this is all banshee stuff this is uh my carburetors s55 that's got to be for my mercedes that might be the new uh tandem pump i got uh, I got a bunch of Banshee stuff up there. This was all Ford stuff I have. And I think all that up there is Ford stuff. I got new headlights. Um, all new lights for the whole truck all the way around. Some other parts. And uh, I have two new fenders for the truck. So we need to, uh, we'll be doing a, a video on that. And uh, for now, I'm going to take a break. And uh, think on my next step. I think uh, I'm going to secure that a little better than it is um that's a nice piece of stainless i don't think uh i want to drill into it so what i think i'm going to do is put the piece up to the bottom of this and then maybe just put another piece on the top so that it can't come up out of this lip and that ain't going nowhere but now i have some more of these leds these bright these things here i got tons of these we pulled out of a bunch of lights now this is kind of you know uh osha approved <laughs> we'll have to do something with that it looks like someone can get lit the fuck up um but i have a bunch of that we'll run a bunch of them down here light all this up like that because that looks really nice and then we'll run a bunch on the inside right here all the way down here light this up and then uh, we'll probably run some up on the inside of this to light this up here and then since i think what i'm going to do with this toolbox this is like my automotive toolbox it's got all um, basically all the big tools i used to work on my truck and I'm going to need most of these tools to be working on that forklift. I'm just going to relocate this toolbox over here to the um, other bay. I'll find a home for it. Um, I'm going to have to put these AC units up. Those ones I'm going to put up here. This one here I'm going to put on a cart and make like a mobile thing. But I need to uh, gain some space that will probably live over there somewhere. And then we can come in here and uh, knock out some projects. We got a ton of projects to do in here. This thing, uh, the AC, that, the forklift. We got a dirt bike over there. Uh, this, I got two of these generators I need to check. This pressure cleaner someone gave me, need to check. Found a whole bunch of threaded rod found a bunch of stuff today man um and i'm about to find some more when i go through these shelves here and these cabinets i'm not even really sure what's in these cabinets not much i think 
these are parts for my car. Yeah. Screws. Oh, we got paint filters. Oh, hey. Big old eyelet. Cutoffs. Oh, this is the uh this is the four-way for the jaws of life so I can run pretty sure I can run one hydraulic pump into this and then power three different pieces of equipment I haven't figured that out yet but I pretty much want to hook that up to the pump that way I can have both jaws on the tool balancer the cutter and the spreader and I could just hit this valve I'm thinking that's what this valve is for and just swap back and forth between the two really fast without having to unplug nothing. This, that's all sandpaper. Let's see what we got here. Oh, we got electrical stuff. Giant. We'll have to go through this and sort this. Plumbing stuff. We're going to be needing this when we uh, start on the water sluice. what else we got a whole drawer full of casters okay it's interesting oh fittings oh man I could have probably used some of this the other day okay didn't know that was in there oh we got a winch we got cable, crimps, we can make our own cables, that's cool, okay, alright, All right. and then I got these two filing cabinets we'll have to go through, and then uh, all these tools and whatnot, um, yeah, so I'm going to take a break, think about what my next step is going to be, and then uh, we'll get back up here, at least finish that tonight, secure that, and then we are going to add all these shelves tonight, which means I'm going to have to relocate all this stuff temporarily and kind of sort through it, which is uh, well uh, needed. Oh, check this out. I got some th synthetic oil, two-stroke oil. Now I need to go get some... Uh, 112 octane race fuel we can ride that four-wheeler <laughs> Okay, we're gonna take a little break. Show you a little project shop secret. This is a thick cut, uh, thick sliced bacon. And um, this is how I uh, stay nice and fat. You bake it in the oven, like halfway, then you flip it, then about 80%. You smother that in uh, maple syrup. Real maple syrup from like Canada. Uh, shout out to all my Canadian peeps. And then uh, cook it the rest of the way, bring it out, sprinkle it with some uh, cayenne pepper, and you will have the best uh, little afternoon snack uh, you ever had, or at least I've ever had. Uh, anyway, we're going to take a break and uh, eat that, but here's where we're at. We got um, everything pretty much done as far as what I wanted to do today except for the shelves. Uh, I moved all the truck parts over there. I took this, I mounted a bracket underneath 
and I bent those tabs over. That thing ain't going anywhere. I hung right in the middle of this thing with my big ass and uh, it didn't bend or flex really. After I eat my bacon, what I'm going to do is uh, continue moving this stuff off of the shelf. Uh, we're pretty much finding some good stuff, man. Found some uh, DeWalt drills that I forgot I had. Now, I only kept those because they are hammer drills. I'll use them for uh, the hammer function. That's pretty much it. Got tons of these power transfers. Uh, I got more back here. Got tons of... Um, Uh, what do you call these things? I'm thinking about that bacon. I can't even remember anything. Um, anyway, got tons of those. I found some big old torches, man. I was wondering where these things were. One of these is like a real expensive Victor. Vector. Anyway, that thing will cut some serious plate. Found some electric motors back there. Got a, uh, a hydraulic, um, I'm going to use this on my little pump. I got a 110 fan, a little hydraulic cooler, and a hydraulic filter we're going to put on there. Found some air tools. I'm just going to take all this stuff off. Oh, check this out. Pulled out my hose reels. Funny thing is, I bought these from two different customers. I had three of these. I gave one to my old neighbor. Um, I paid $50 a piece for these. These came out of a Costco um, automotive thing. Man, they were like 600 bucks a piece. This one, I don't know how much that was, probably even more. But that's a 221. I paid 50 bucks for that from another customer. So I'm probably going to hang that back there. I'll hang one of these up by the front door. I'll probably hang one either over here or i'll probably hang one back there somewhere and then i'll hang the other one all the way in the back matter of fact i'll probably just hang the one right here because i i work out here a lot um and then i have one more i forgot all about yeah uh, i i paid 20 bucks for that one um so yeah it's looking good i'm probably just going to clean these off put these shelves and call it a night uh, I got to come back in here early tomorrow and do some scrapping. We're going to do a, a micro scrap um, and pretty much clean out the shop. I got a bunch of stuff uh, that I want to get rid of. I'm going to try to blow through these things and finally get rid of this AC stuff. I have a couple pallets outside. And then I have these big staters that I need to get to. What I'm thinking about doing is taking a cherry picker and picking them up over top of this kiln and uh i haven't even fired that thing up yet but i want to either i either want to bring them right above it and i'm going to cook them to burn away all the uh glue make these come out or i'm gonna set them over there out the back door and i'm gonna cut up a pallet and i'm just gonna burn them uh burn the inside of it to loosen up that stuff I need to get this stuff off of the table and um, you know we need we need to uh, work on a couple different things on uh, pulling that out I don't know if I'm gonna have time tomorrow but I, I wanted to go get some oxygen for my torch so I can cut these shafts on the other side and um, there was another one around here somewhere I think I got a pallet of them yeah, I got some big ones over here. Those got to be pulled out too. So, um, and then I'm looking for a plate. I need some plates, man. Big, big boy plates so I can make some big boy splitters. Because you know what? We ain't going to be messing around with this bull crap no more. We're going to be splitting these big fuckers in half. Oh, I don't know if I showed you what was in here. I found a bunch of tape and some bolts and uh oh check this out potential cutter up and down for the uh wire stripper i think that's a um uh a wood chipper blade this is some happy homeowner garbage i don't even know why that's in here 
see all this stuff needs to be gone through and sorted. It's all my air tool. I just seen an air tool. All my air tools. I got more somewhere. Oh. Y'all know what that is? This was the chipper I made for those pipes when I first moved into this shop. Them big giant pipes I had. That didn't like uh didn't like welding. What do we got here? Safety gear. Paint. More paint. Oh, car stuff. Oh, check this out. I found something earlier that I thought was pretty cool. We're going to have to hang this somewhere. So when I sort all my nuts and bolts, I got one of those things where you can figure out what your nuts and bolts are standard or metric so i gotta figure out where that's gonna go somewhere over here obviously or maybe right here i don't know um found a bunch of tools this is interesting you ever seen one of these i have no idea where this came from but the only thing i can think of what it is is it goes on a hitch like this right and turns your hitch into like a swivel hook i guess i don't know found my big four link chain i gotta cut some links off of that shorten it up i could put that out on a crane and uh yeah found my milwaukee hole saw that i was looking for the other day i had to put this big boy drill bit on there <laughs> I couldn't find it. It was buried back in this just mess of stuff. So, all right, we're taking a break. We'll be back at it here in about 30 minutes. Okay, we're back at it. It's another day. Uh, what happened was I ate that damn bacon yesterday and then I got on the computer and was kind of um, previewing a video. And then uh, I wound up falling asleep with the laptop on my uh, lap there. And then, um, yeah, that was it for me. I decided to go home. Um, anyway, we're just going to kind of take all this in for a second. And um, I, uh, what I'm going to do now is I am going to put up these shelves real quick and kind of get all the stuff back in here somewhat more organized than it was. Um, but I have to get back on some scrapping tomorrow uh is wednesday and thursday is thanksgiving you probably won't see uh thanksgiving already done past by the time you see this video but um i want to get to the scrap yard before they close because i won't be able to get back there until um you know the following week they're going to close thursday and friday Okay, this is where we're at. Um, you don't know how much shit you have until you start going through it. Jesus Christ. Um, you got tons of stuff. And I keep finding like bins that just have random stuff thrown in them. So all of these bins eventually need to be gone through. I can't do it today. I don't have enough time for this. But 
we will at least finish the shelves. I got four more shelves to put up. Now, unfortunately, over here, uh, I wanted to lower that shelf and this shelf, but you know, in my in, uh, infinite wisdom, I screwed all the original shelves to this upright. Uh, one, to help it not these shelves not rack this way and to support this from racking that way so all of those shelves can't be moved the only thing i can do is stick um another shelf in between so we have a ton of uh power transfers and um torque multipliers uh, most of these are brand new these these ones here are stainless steel and uh, these ones here I have like four of them that are pretty much exactly the same I think I got a quote on this one this was like 900 bucks and uh, I forget what I paid maybe 50 50 bucks for a whole pile of them and then I have a whole bunch of these four of the same uh, and then I have this one here, which I just I did the math. It's got like 11,000 inch pounds or something. It came out to 900 and something, almost a thousand foot pounds of torque. This thing will produce. So that thing needs to be turned into a pre shredder for the granulator, so I can just throw some copper up in there. Um, yeah, we got a lot of stuff. Now, the stainless ones, uh, there's three of them that are pretty much the same. Two of them are exactly the same. One of them, the output's coming out the other side. But I'm pretty sure you can swap those outputs um, just by unbolting that and just swapping that thing around. These things are pretty cool, pretty universal. Wait till you see what I want to do with those two stainless ones. And I got a third stainless one, but it's got the through shaft like this. Um, those things are pretty cool. Uh, let me know what you think I should do with the rest of them. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to need that many of them, but hey, we got them. This is going to be my electric motor uh, thing. This is going to be for all my power tools. Don't know what this is going to be yet. Now, I left that up high because my vacuum will slide up underneath of there. Um, now, I have four more of these things. I'll probably I'm thinking I might I wanted to leave enough so a bucket can slide in that one so I'll probably leave that where it is I might bring this one down two notches and then do another small little cubby like this where I can shove a bunch of small stuff and then we're just gonna have to custom make them I, I can eat one of them up right here I'll go halfway um, so that this has another shelf area and uh, yeah all this stuff it's just a lot of stuff man we need to go through it we need to start utilizing it we need to start putting these parts on the truck put them parts on the Banshee whatever I have for my car needs to go on the car and uh, yeah this will be a functioning tool slash hardware room um you know it's probably gonna take me about a month of uh going through all this stuff and rounding up uh all the hard holy smokes i i found so many bins and buckets of hardware i'm probably gonna fill that out pretty good and uh those over there the top one at least i'm gonna take all the bolts out of it and convert that to stainless steel like all stainless stuff but anyway i'm gonna take a quick break and um kind of wrap my brain around what i want to do next like i was going through this bin i got brand new d-rings for the trailer i got a cable puller a battery holder um this is for like if you're climbing you can slide these up and lock down on ropes I got a bunch of them. Um, this is back when I used to cut concrete. I had a bunch of that stuff. Just weird stuff. 
Uh, these are, what the hell are these? These are for the truck, I think, to put things on your bed. We got a lifting block. Bunch of little mini D-rings. Another lifting block. I don't know what I'm doing with all these lifting blocks. Hooks. Shackles. You know. So we need to find a home for all this stuff. I mean, some of this stuff, if you had to buy it, man, this is expensive shit. Especially, like, um, this stuff here. This stuff ain't cheap, man. Made in the USA? Yeah. And I used to have more. I used to have all kinds of cool shit for uh, climbing, rigging. Uh, like if you're tying yourself or your equipment off. I used to do a lot of like work where you're working high up in the air and stuff like that. And you don't want to drop your equipment on people. So, yeah, I got tons. Just There's just so much stuff, man. <laughs> I'd hate to have to freaking move. But if I could find the right place that's fucking cheaper than this ridiculous place, I will pack this shit right up. And what's cool about the way I did all of this shelving, and even the shelving out there, it's all freestanding, it'll all unbolt, and can go back to its original thing. If you look at these, long-time viewers of the channel know that I had cut these in half. These actually came from a um, Napa that went out of business. And these, they were scrap. Man, I'm an idiot. Like right around when I first started scrapping, there was piles of this stuff. And I just grabbed like whatever you see here. And uh, I should have grabbed way more uprights and way more things. Um, I could have literally, as many as they had, I could have lined the whole shop with shelves. And, um, you know, if I can find a place for everything... I think I'm gonna start saving some of the better stuff that I get and and try to sell it online. I mean, now that I'm looking of like what I've got going on and the shelf space, once I, you know, if you find a home for everything, um, everything's gonna kind of compact and be more organized and not so chaotic. Um, I'm actually gonna have a lot of shelf space out there in the shop where I can put some of the electrical gear and other stuff and start putting it online for sale. Um, but everything that's gonna be in here is all my shit. You can't have that. <laughs>okay there you have it that's pretty much all the shelving i'm going to do for the day now i wind up um not deciding not to put the shelf here because it would have stuck out like all the way over to here somewhere um what i'm going to do is use some of that holy unistrut or whatever you call it and i'm going to run a piece here and then we'll tap into this and just make a shelf splitting this just like i'm going to do right over here um, I'm okay with what's going on here with the shelf wise. Uh, I left this one and this one uh, so that I can put milk crates. I actually found a, a, literally a whole milk crate full of brand new transformers in a box. And uh, as you can see by the big boy wire I got up there, you know, I don't scrap all the copper, I do save some of it. <laughs> now I don't know what I'm gonna do with them transformers. I think I saved them for one of my customers, he wanted to buy them. Um, but I haven't seen them in a while, so um, they're pretty much probably going to make their way over to the Transformer Press. I don't see a use for them. I don't think he wants them at this point. They've been sitting on that shelf for probably a year. Um, I mean, they are brand new in the box, but hey, that don't mean shit to me. We'll send them right to the scrapyard, especially if they're double copper. Uh, I did find this whole little bin of i think this is copper i think i have a bunch of these things um i don't know what i'm going to do with this stuff I, I really have no use for it so i might as well send it to the scrap yard and i found this big old 
neutral uh, current transformer with a big old bus bar going through it. I don't know. Uh, that whole thing is probably going right to the scrap yard. I don't know. Found a little pneumatic cylinder. That's pretty cool. Um, just a bunch of stuff. Now, pretty much maybe the power tools and these tools here are probably going to stay there. The motors will be there. Those will probably stay there. Um, but everything else that's up here, I don't have the time to do it today, but I, I need to go through and find the correct spot for everything and then start consolidating all the same shit into the same area, you know? Uh, I need to get a couple more bins or milk crates because, um, you know, I'm just going to need... I got a lot of stuff here to go through. And then uh, once I go through everything that's in here and find the spots where it's going to be, like, you know... Probably this whole section from here, maybe um, m not including these two shelves, is going to be pretty much tools, you know, like power tools, specialty tools in the box, um, and that, that shelf right there. I'll probably, you know, get rid of all that stuff that's on there. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... I'm pretty stoked about it. I gained a whole bunch. Look at all the empty shelves now. You know, I gained a whole... And then, once I go through this stuff, everything here is going to get condensed down even more. And, uh, you know... And then I can start working on out there, bringing in... I mean, I got buckets of tools and pallets and just, um, you know, milk crates and boxes and bins... And we just need to go through it all. See what's uh, doing and, uh, you know, maybe get rid of some of this crap. Maybe put it on uh, OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace. Um, I think I am... I have a lot of brand new high dollar electrical gear. Um, I'll probably start trying to sell that stuff. And uh, create like a um, email text slash text list where i can just take pictures send it to all my customers see if they want any of this crap um you know and then uh you know post it online at the same time see if anyone else wants it my problem is i don't want to deal with a 100 freaking phone calls and then every time you put your number out on like marketplace or offer up you get freaking spam calls and fucking scammers and it's just it kind of deters me from wanting to go down that route, but, you know, I hate scrapping good stuff. I really do. As much as I want to run them transformers right through the transformer press, um, I'd rather find someone that wants them transformers, but, um, you know, because they're brand new in the box. If they were just loose transformers, like the ones I get that I know are good, nobody wants a used transformer. But new in the box, that's a different story. So... On that note, I'm going to uh, wrap it up here and uh, switch gears into... Uh, we're probably going to be doing some micro scrapping out here and uh, get a little load. Uh, I got a little bit of copper to recover and, and uh, stuff like that. Um, clean out the shop a little bit before the, the last... Because it's going to be four, five days before I can go back to Miami. I don't know when the steel yard is going to open, but... That's going to give me a couple days to get in here and really go through this stuff. So, let me know what you guys think. Uh, any suggestion? Um, I always love the comments. You see, I respond to every single one of them. Um, even if I don't agree with them or if it's not something that's really feasible in my realm. Um, I do appreciate every single comment and all the suggestions. So, um, feel free to comment. Tell me you like it. Tell me you don't like it. You know, I, I like all the criticism. So, come this far. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.
I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. Dude, I can smell that from here. All right, so here's the here's the uh, craziness we got going on. We're testing another coil. I put that on that thing. We just basically gutted all the wires off thing and <laughs> hardwired it to it. Hey, I wouldn't touch that. It ain't. Grounded. I'm not touching it, dude. I'm it just. It ain't grounded. Um. So it says it was 220, but I guess it's splitting the 110 to 110 to either side. I'm not sure how it works. I'm not an electrician, but we got um, She's more her. heating coils. I'm how long do you think that'll take to heat it's up? Hot. It's already hot. I could light a cigarette. I can off. feel it like up here. Yeah. This thing's steaming away. I don't know if you can see the steam, but it's yeah. getting hot. Like the outside of this thing is. That thing's a joke. I can, I can barely touch it. Why don't you stick your hand in there and, and touch it and tell me how much of a joke it is. Ooh, oh shit, that's hot steam. Okay, I don't see this thing over here. I don't see it glowing yet. Yeah, so that's a joke too. It's hot as crap. Here it comes. I think when them things are in there and it's sealed, that's where it's gonna get its heat. I don't think we're gonna be able to cook these big staters like I thought, so. What we're gonna have to do is called fire. Build a fire in the middle of that big fucker and just burn it. Yeah. I do got the rosebud attachment. What I'll do is on this one here, we'll hit this with a torch since it's already up in the press. Yeah. And uh, Steve brought his big pneumatic, uh, what is this, an air hammer? Air chisel. Air chisel. And yeah. uh, we'll hit the back sides with this. I got a lot of comments saying hit it with the air chisel. I'm not too confident that it's going to move these. Steve thinks it will. Oh, yeah. I mean, it might do something, but I could see that thing just kind of digging down in there and, and wedging that copper. And um, But hey, we're going to try. Okay. 